So, uh, look, uh, this is uh, problem 8.1.13 in Pearson's set of questions. Find the value of each of the six trigonometric functions of the angle theta in the figure. Um, one of the, I, I'm not sure, a, stu a student specifically asked for this, but I'm not sure. Um, one, one of the things I've seen the students do, especially when taking an exam, we maximize the screen, is they're reading the question over here and they're thinking there's not enough information because they don't notice the tiny little triangle over here. So first we need to know that we have this triangle with these two uh, side lengths and note that it's a right triangle. Once we're there, we should be okay, but we'll, I'll run through it as well. And so they want the six trigonometric functions. So uh, I'm gonna reconstruct our triangle over here. We have this triangle, it's not to scale of course. My theta is up here and 16 is here, 32 is here, and it's a right triangle. So I'm gonna tell you that if we are looking to determine the six trigonometric functions, we're looking for the sine of theta, I should say, uh, correction, not the six trigonometric functions, the six trigonometric ratios. So each trig ratio is a ratio of two sides of the triangle. So uh, I have cosine, sine, and this one is the opposite length of the opposite leg divided by the length of the hypotenuse. This is cosine is the length of the adjacent leg divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And tangent, of course, is the also thought of as sine over cosine, or also the length of the Doolittle algebra or simplification. And we get the length of the opposite leg divided by the length of the adjacent leg. So let's go back up here and do a little work. So to to focus just on these first three, I have theta here, and the leg that is adjacent is this one. So that takes care of this and that. The hypotenuse is here. So that takes care of this, this. But I'm missing the length of the opposite leg this side. It's opposite the angle. And so I have to determine that. Uh, I'm going to go quickly. That's Pythagorean theorem because this is a right triangle. So I'm going to get 32 squared equals 16 squared plus the length, and I'll call that x for now, x squared. And I don't know what 32 squared is. So 32 squared is 1024. And I have a friend who would tell me that I should know that, and 16 squared is 256 plus x squared, 1024 minus 256 is 768. I do not believe that is a perfect square. And let's just double check it. Second square root, second answer, pow. Nope. So uh, I would tell you that eventually I would simplify this, uh, but we'll do that later. Let's go ahead and figure out how to work this out. So sine is the length of the opposite leg, which I, as previously stated is the uh, square root of 768 divided by 32. And that's probably gonna simplify um, quite easily. The uh, cosine is the length of the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse, and that's uh, 16 over 32, which simplifies to be 1 half. Oh, that's gonna be, yeah, this is gonna be 30, 60, 90. And uh, this guy is going to be the ratio of these two, or if you prefer, um, opposite over adjacent. And let's go ahead and now simplify the square root of 768 so I can get the simplified answers for these two guys. So 768. I'm going to go the long way and say, okay, I can factor this into 4 times 768 divided by 4 is 192, okay? And so this further further factors into four times four times 48. One more time, at least, four times four times four, and I get 12, and one more time. Four times four times four, 
one more time times three, okay? So this can be written as square root of 16, another square root of 16, and the square root of three. That's four times four, square root of three, which is 16 times the square root of three. And let's draw this triangle over again. We have 16, 32, and 16 times the square root of three. If you don't recognize that, that's fine. You don't need to, but this happens to be a 30, 60, 90, as I stated earlier. Remember in the unit circle, if we have one half, one, square root of three over two, that's a 30, 60, 90, or a triangle with angles 90, excuse me, pi over two, pi over three, and pi over six. So uh, 16 radical three, so this can be written as 16 radical 3 over 32, which is radical 3 over 2. And that one's 1 half, and this one's going to be 16 radical 3, radical 3. Something's not right. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. I'm an idiot. So the tangent is equal to radical 3. Sorry, that was dumb. Okay, so uh, I have three of them, three of the answers, and now I need the other three to get the full six. So the others are the cosecant, of theta, which is equal to one over the sine, the reciprocal, secant of theta equals one over cosine theta, and cotangent of theta, which is equal to one over tangent, or cosine over sine. So I think I've taught you in class that I would just take these guys and execute the reciprocal so that I get two over radical three. This one I have two over one, and this one I have 1 over radical 3. How do I need to work that out? I need to rationalize these. So I'm going to multiply this times radical 3 over radical 3. I'm going to leave this one alone, so that's just 2. This one I have to multiply times radical 3 over radical 3 as well. And so this becomes radical 3 over 3. And this one is 2 radical 3 over 3. So there are my six answers. Okay, hopefully that's helpful, especially to the person who called in or emailed in. All right, take care. Bye.